This video is going to, going to take a short look at using lines inside of Revit um, to build patterns, um, to add information, and in particular, um, what a lot of the output that we're using line works for in Revit isn't just to enhance a drawing, but it's to actually establish cut lines for building models. So everything that I'm doing is kind of looking at that as an in-game, but hopefully we'll see a few additional things in there as well. So first, to start drawing lines, one of the things that I often find myself doing is back, is loading in some kind of background image to trace. I'm actually going to begin the process there. Um, I'm working on this project where we're building some architecture from fashion. And so we're going to grab a pattern, a dress pattern, and we're going to start by tracing that shape. And again, I'm bringing in an image of this pattern, and in particular, I'm thinking about this portion of the pattern. I'm thinking about it not as, you know, sort of this human scale thing, where maybe this is about 48 inches or 40 inches, something like that, but more about this at the building scale as something that I can cut out and start folding and reshaping um, and starting to create this really interesting building facade with. So one of the first things that I need to do is actually establish as a real scale in my virtual space. So let's just start using the line tools to start figuring those things out. So I'm going to go to annotate, and I'm typically going to use detail lines. And detail lines don't exist as part of your overall model. They only exist in the active view that you're working in. So if I navigate to any other view, level one, level two, site, etc., these lines that I'm going to draw only exist as an overlay as two-dimensional lines in my level one view. So I'm going to start, let's just draw a line right here across the base. One more line at the top. And let's say that I would like this dimension right here between these two not to be 36 feet, but let's do this as around a two-story height. Um, let's go with 24 feet. So I'm going to go to Modify, Offset, 24 feet. So I'm going to scale this image about those dimensions. So I've got my image selected. I'm going to establish scale. I'm going to use this as my base point. This is my original. That's the dimension that I want. So you can see it's scaled that image down. This height is now 24 feet. And let's get rid of those guidelines. Next thing that I want to do is establish a new line style um, and give me something that I can work uh, with with a color, something that will be a little bit easier to see and something that will translate to fabrication. So I'm going to go to, um, where am I going to go? I, I, I believe I'm going to go to Manage. Yeah, Manage, Additional Settings, and Line Styles. So this is my list of lines. Once I activate the annotation line, this is the list of lines that show up. And I want to add a laser cut line to this list. So I'm going to click New, enter the name Laser. I'm going to change from black to green, first so that my laser picks up that line really easily, and second so it's something that I can see a little bit clearer uh, as I'm tracing over these black lines. And I'm going to say OK and OK. Now when I go to Annotate and Detail Line, I can select in my list laser, and this is going to give me a nice bright green line. So a few things about drawing lines. Um, the, the, the line types that I find myself using the most are straight and spline. Um, there are other options, including curved shapes and ellipses, but I'm just going to kind of dive into this with this idea of a spline that's going from edge to edge. And then once I've done so, I've selected four points across, four different left clicks. I'm going to tap Escape to drop the tool. And then I'm going to click Escape one more time to drop the line tool. The nice thing about the spline is I have these grips that I can come back and edit my line with and get it exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to use um, Line again. And I'm going to go Endpoint to create the straight piece, tapping Escape to drop that type of line, and this time I'm not going to lose or drop the line tool altogether, I'm just going to switch to a spline. Again, I'm going to start this spline at an endpoint. Let's draw this shape. Straight line. And I think you get the idea. So let's just go ahead and close this out quickly with some straight lines.
Okay, so I've got half of this drawn in, and what I might want to do is mirror those lines right across this axis. So with that drawn in, with this axis drawn in, I'm going to do a right-hand lasso. So I'm going to come right across to the right. Now the difference between the right lasso and a left lasso inside of Revit. Going to my right, I can see that my lasso is a solid line. That is only going to select the lines within the boundaries of the lasso. So in particular, it's not going to pick up this spline at the top. If I come across with a left lasso, it is going to select everything that intersects. So I'm getting the background image, a lot of different things here that I might not want. Okay. Uh, in particular, you know, now that I've got this center axis drawn in, I'm actually having second thoughts about this particular spline. I really want that guy to go away. I want that spline to end right here so I can build a perfect mirror of this object. So let's redraw that spline. On the fly editing. I apologize. All right, so let's not do that. We want to grab all of this line work to the right. I'm going to use my mirror about an axis tool. So now I have that perfect set of lines both sides. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the tab key. The tab key helps you cycle through your selection options available. So just hovering over this top, top line, I can select an individual line. I'm going to hit tab one more time. All of my lines, I'm going to hit tab again. It's going to give me my background image. What I want are all those lines. So I'm going to left click. So essentially what I'm seeing there is my preview in terms of the selection. So that's a preview, and then once you left click, your object is selected. So now that I have that, I can also come in and begin adding some additional things that I want to do with this geometry. And again, this would be a pattern that starts to get cut out on something like a laser cutter or a die cutter or something like that. If I wanted to start treating this as an object inside of an object, another modifier that I can begin using is offset. So let's go to offset. Let's offset something about six inches. And I can begin building sort of patterns within patterns. I'm going to use the trim tool, and I'm going to trim this line to this line. Now there's an important part about the trim tool. Always click on the segment part of the line that you want to keep. So if I want this um, resultant of this trim line to be something that comes to here and wraps around this way, I want to make sure I click to this side of where this line would intersect. So I'm going to click here to here to build that line. Let's undo that really quickly. and I want to pull this line out just a bit and demonstrate that going in the other direction. So I'm going to activate trim again. So if I click this to this edge of the segment, it's going to build in that direction. Trim this to that, it's going to build this. Okay. So again, um, I have a lot of different things that I can begin working with to start building this pattern up. Next thing that I can do is an array. And once I'm happy where, where this is heading to, I can go to my array tool. And I'm going to do, uh, there are several options that I can do with array. And the best thing to do is to just dive into using them. I'm going to turn off, for this demo, I'm going to turn off group and associate. So this is going to be kind of a one-time shot at doing an array. It's not going to be as easy to modify when it's done. But I, I'm, I'm OK with that. So I'm going to click and displace this just a bit, something like that. And then let's say that I want to repeat that pattern more than once. Okay. Well, I guess that's actually why I want to use. Let's back up that statement really quickly here. That was a single time use array. It essentially is a way to build a copy. So if I undo this, select this again, array. Let's say that I want more than the single copy. Again, I have group and associate unchecked. So let's say I want to do that 10 times. I could build my offset from here to here, and it's going to give me 10 of those, all as individual objects. Okay, let's come back to my original. I'm going to do the same array trick again. 
array, but this time we're going to group and associate. Group and associate, excuse me. So same thing, let's do this from here to here. Okay, this time I've got something that I can modify as it comes together. So perhaps I don't want two, maybe I want 10. And perhaps my spacing should be a little bit tighter. And you can see it begins to modify all of those to build a certain pattern and rhythm that I might want to create in terms of building a pattern. I can also come in and edit my individual object and I can begin changing what some of these line types are or I can add to it with additional line work. So again annotate detail line So I'm adding to that pattern, finish, and it will distribute that change across everything. And this same trick works with my two-dimensional geometry and my three-dimensional geometry. So other things with the line tool, um, you know, I have copy, rotate, scale. It's the same system that we worked with in terms of um, scaling the image. It will get the same kind of effect. One of the last ones that I do want to show, though, is being able to divide a segment. So if I have a single line, and if I need to divide that into three pieces, there is a tool called Split. And this essentially gives me a little virtual X-Acto knife, which allows me to take a single line or wall or anything else that might come into play and divide that into multiple segments. So knowing that that exists comes in really handy in terms of building um, some specific shapes that you might need um, as, you're, as you're drawing lines. So let's translate this a little bit into some architecture. So let's look at this east elevation of this project. Or actually, let's take a look at it first in 3D. So here's this uh, building design that I've been working with. And let's say that I want to laser cut this back glass. One of the fastest ways to do that is to trace out my lines. So you can see these green cut lines that I've traced, that I've placed on here. And now I need to get this pattern, these green cut lines, away from this building so that I can put them on a sheet and use them to cut. So I'm going to select one of my detail lines. And I'm going to come down to the eyeglasses, and I am going to isolate the line category. Essentially, this is going to make everything really, really easy to select. I'm just going to grab all of those. I'm going to move them up. Reset. And now I've got that line work off to the side, and this is ready to go. So you can see really quickly how I can take that pattern, move that to a sheet, and I can really quickly begin to come in and build these lines for fabrication. The other thing that I can do with my line work inside of Revit is I can add a little bit of additional detail. So Revit doesn't always give me the exact line weight on things that I'm looking for. You can see I've got these sort of nice thick lines here, but I don't really have the same kind of line weight quality everywhere. So one of the other things that I can do with my line work is I can come in, annotate, detail line, and I might go down to my wide line type and begin to add in a little bit of punch to some of these lines really, really quickly on my elevation. And again, these are not going to show up anywhere. These are only going to show up on this specific elevation view. But doing that just gives that line work, that little extra sort of kick that sometimes it needs to help certain edges stand out in my drawing. So in doing that, um, one other method that I can use, detail lines, I can also use this pick lines tool. And a lot of times that pick lines tool will go even faster in terms of selecting the line work across my drawing. Um, and sometimes it goes a little bit too far. Let's delete that. So just kind of learning when and how to use that exact right line is really nice. Trim, modify, trim, that to that. 
and you can begin to see that you know building these lines just to touch up an elevation really quickly is a pretty easy thing to do and a really powerful set of tools. Last item, um, let's say that this is a standing seam roof and I don't have the pattern on there just yet in terms of my actual roof form. One of the things that I can do is use my annotation tools to do a filled region um, to help build a pattern on a roof or brick for a wall, anything along those lines. So let's take one look at that as a set of line tools as well. So the region tools, I'm going to select region, and I'm going to do a filled region. A masked region is simply going to be something to hide. You know, I'm going to put a virtual piece of paper to hide something else. Um, let's go to edit type, duplicate, and I'm going to call these vert line my fill pattern that I'm going to use, vertical lines, okay, I want them not in black because I want them to be a little bit background in their tonality, so I'm going to pick a medium gray, okay, and okay. So I'm going to pick the type of edge that I'm drawing with first. Um, on something like this, I would choose a wide line, and then I can trace out the portion um, or the outside area that I would like to have filled. So you can see I've got this triangle right here. Um, fill vertical lines um, that are gray. As soon as I click the checkbox, I have this area with a gray line as an infill, um, beginning to get that idea of perhaps a standing seam roof. I can come back at any point, and again, I'm going to use my tab key to select my region, and I can say edit boundary to get back to that point to make modifications, and those modifications will show up as soon as I click select. There are grips, just like there are for lots of things in Revit, so I can do some basic modifications as well just by grabbing those grips and moving some things around also. So this is a great tool to, to uh, a great set of tools, the annotation tools, to begin building lines for fabrication, to add details to your drawings, um, and to begin to ideate on exactly what it is that you're trying to accomplish at any point along the line in the design process.